Hello artists, welcome to your panda painting class. In front of you, you should have your canvas with panda sketch, a cup of water, a paper towel, a large brush, a small brush, black paint, white paint, light green, dark green, and red. If you do not have all those materials, you are welcome to push pause on the video and come back to us whenever you're ready. The first thing you're going to do is you are going to wash and dry your brushes. So I'm just going to swirl my two brushes around and gently pat them onto my paper towel. All right. Um, the second thing we're going to do is we're going to paint two areas on our panda white. So the belly area is going to be white and then around the um, kind of the eyes area and where the mouth is going to be later on white as well. I'm going to grab my white, excuse me, my big brush and my white paint. So big brush, white paint. Mine has a little bit of red in it from the previous class. Ignore that, please. <laughs> so big brush, white paint. All I'm going to do is go inside the pencil line. So be careful. You don't want to completely erase that stomach line, but almost like a rainbow shape underneath it. I'm going to outline it. Then go to the left and to the right and underneath it, outline it all white. Once I'm done, I'm going to paint all that space inside of it. White. So a nice white belly. Perfect. That's my big brush. I'm smoothing out all the bumps. If you want to do two coats, which means you paint it once, let it dry, and then go back over it a second time, you can. That'll just kind of give it a little bit better coverage. It'll make it look more solid so you don't see any of the white canvas behind it. Once you're done, you can take that same big brush and white paint. Now I'm going to go around the eyes. I'll try not to go over the pencil lines, but make a bubble around that eye. This is still with my big brush and my white paint. Go around that eye. Then I'll actually try to cover up this white, uh, the pencil line with white for this bottom part. So I'm actually going to go over this pencil line and paint down here side to side with white. So this bottom area is going to be all white. And I did go over the pencil line. If your pencil smears a little bit onto the white, you can just kind of sweep it out and eventually it goes away. So the bottom part of the face going over the pencil line. Once you're done, you can start working up here again. I'm going over the pencil line up here as well. And then you can paint inside of the forehead space. And I'm kind of using that same side to side movement that I use on the bottom part of the face. So all this area going to be white. If you want, you can go back and give it a second coat, which means you go back and over it after it dries for a couple minutes. I think now that I've given this part some time to dry, I'll go over it and paint it white again and make it look a little bit cleaner. Make sure you smooth out all the bumps. There you go. And then I'll go in there with my white paint again. After a couple minutes, I'm just going to clean up this area a little bit more. Perfect. Without cleaning my big brush, I'm just going to add a little bit of red to it. So just a dot of red to my big brush. I didn't wash it. I just added a dot of red. 
And I'm going to go in there on this part of the feet with a little bit of red and white on my brush. And make the bottom part of the paw pink. So a dot of red, like a dot dot of red. And I'll continue to paint this one. And you can always go back for more. A little bit of white, a dot of red. Get that one a little bit dark. And if you want your pink to be darker on the paw, add more red. If you want it to be lighter, add more white. But since we had white on our brush, we went ahead and jumped in there. Added a dot of red and started painting the paws. So down here, you can go over the pencil line a little bit. And then I'll go in there in these little areas. One, if you feel like you need to jump to a small brush at this point, you can. Just add white and a dot of red and go into those four spaces. I'm just kind of moving my brush up and down. And filling those spaces up. White, a dot of red. Take some of that off there. And I'll go in there and paint one, two, three, four. And again, I'm just kind of moving my brush up and down. And be sure they look pretty even. They're all the same kind of pink. You don't want one to be way darker than the other one. So they all kind of look like they're the same pink. And again, you can go back for more white or red as you need. And later on, we'll go in there and we will um, outline around these oval shapes up here around the paws so that I'll kind of clean it up. So don't feel like it has to be perfect. So you just want to kind of fill those areas up. And then once you're done, you can wash and dry all the brushes that you used. I just used my big brush. So I'm just washing and drying my big brush. Again, white and red. And those two paw areas all filled in. And if you're still working on it and not done yet, you're welcome to push pause on the video at this point. The next thing we are going to do is we are going to paint the background, the light green, with our small brush. So background, light green, excuse me, with our big brush. So light green, big brush, background. <laughs> Once my big brush is clean, I'm going to dip my big brush in that light green. And I'm going to make a bubble around my panda. So I'm just going to go on the outside. I'm not going to paint any area inside of my panda light green. And be careful. If your white is really uh, wet still, you want to do your best to avoid it. But I'm just going on the outside. And creating a bubble around my panda. This is so I know where to stop with my light green and I have a nice clean line around my panda. So, so far, be sure you don't have any bumps. You can drag your brush so it looks nice and smooth. And going over my pencil line a little bit as well. only going on the outside of your penguin. Do not go inside his belly area. Or in his face area. And you're just creating this nice light green bubble. And again, go over and smooth it out if you have any bumps. Make sure it looks nice and clean. And then you can go back to more light green whenever you're ready and paint all that space behind your panda light green with an up and down motion of your brush. So you can see this bubble around my panda shape. And then I'm just kind of moving my brush in an up and down formation. I am also going over my outline a little bit too. And I'm 
Uh, another thing I'm doing is I am going over the whole thing to kind of make it look a little bit smoother, not as choppy. You don't see those stop and go movements with my brush as much. So all the background is going to be light green. And then later on, we'll even paint the four sides of our canvas light green. side as well. So I'm slowly going in there and smoothing out my lines. So it is absolutely up to you, uh, but if you want to do the background in a second with a second coat, in the original you can see some of the canvas still kind of peeking through, but if you want it more of a solid green where you don't see the white canvas peeking through, once you're done with painting the four sides, if you want to go back and give the front and then the four sides again, a second coat you can. It's absolutely optional. It matters what you um, want the background to look like. So if you want it to be a little bit more solid, you can give it a second coat. And then later on, you'll be making your bamboo with two coats if you'd like. Or you can just stick with one coat. But be consistent. If you do two or three coats of this light green, then do two or three coats of the dark green when we add the bamboos on top. You want them to be same, the same amount. So they work well together. All right, once I'm done, I can start painting the four sides. The bottom part as well. Be very careful, you can start painting the other sides and the top part as well. And if you are still working on yours um, while I'm moving on, you, again, you can push pause on the video, finish up your light green and join us whenever you're ready. And before I put any dark green bamboos on there, I'll definitely wanna give this some time to dry. because that light green and the dark green will mix too much together if they're both wet. So I'll give this light green some drying time. And be sure you don't have any areas that you accidentally missed. If you got some on your panda, the good news is you're either covering it with black, which covers it up, or you're whiting it out with white, which also covers it up. <laughs> Perfect. All right, and then I'm gonna go ahead and wash and dry whichever brushes I used. I think later on I'll come over here and just kind of clean this up with white. Got some green on my panda. Once I was done, I'm gonna wash and dry the brushes that I used. All right. Next thing I'm gonna do is I am gonna start with the eye um, and then nose and mouth areas and also the ears. So I'm gonna kind of be working in this area first before I work my way down. I'm gonna use my small brush. Again, be sure it's washed and dried. I am going to outline um, the eye area. Be sure your white is dry. If your white is still shiny and wet, give it a couple more minutes. But with my small brush and my black paint, I'm covering up my pencil lines from before. It has kind of like that kidney bean shape. And then over here, same idea. And again, I'm dragging my small brush. I'm 
all the way from one side here now. Like so. My white was still a little bit wet over there, so I'll go back and touch it up. I'm going to use my bigger brush to kind of fill it in, but it's up to you. You can stick with your small brush if you feel like you'll do a better job filling up the space. And be sure it's a solid block. You don't see any white peeking through. And be sure that it's nice and smooth. And if your white was still wet and it mixed with your black, give it some more time to dry and then go over it with whichever one you need to go over it with. I'm going to go over this area with black later to kind of clean up that outline. And to correct myself, black and white are actually not colors. They're, um, so black is a shade. It's going to make your colors darker. And white is a tint. It's going to make your colors lighter. So either go back to your black or white. So black is a shade. It'll make your colors darker. And white is a tint. It'll make your colors lighter. All right. Next, I am going to work on those ears. And it'll be the same idea. I'm going to outline and then fill in. Also going to cover up those pencil lines. Using my small brush to outline. So I'm using a small brush to do my line work. Be careful if your paint is still wet, your green paint is still wet. You might want to give it some more time to dry. And you can use your small brush or your large brush to fill in. Whichever one you feel more comfortable with. So there's one cute ear. And there's the other cute ear. In just a moment, I will do the nose and um, the mouth the nose and the mouth I'm gonna stick with that small brush I'm gonna come between these two kidney uh, kidney shapes kidney bean shapes and I'm gonna make a small triangle and it's always easier to start off small and if you need to get bigger you can but you don't want to get too big too fast so uh, if you want to watch the size of my nose for my panda, and then you're welcome to start. Start off with a straight line, pretty tiny. And we come down a little bit in and a little bit in. Small brush only. And then I'm going to fill this in. So start off with a straight line going side to side. And I came in just a little bit on either side. Go back for a little bit more black. Tap it on my paper towel. And then I'm going to make the cute smile. With the cute smile, I'm going to come down from this point. Not too far down, not that far down. I'm going to make this into a J shape. Not, not going too far out on that side. Almost like a W shape down here. A little bit of a curve, like so. As that is drying, while I still have the small brush in my hand, I'm gonna work my way down with my black paint. If you're still working on that top part, you're welcome to continue. But I'm just gonna paint this whole body part up here, black above the white area that I've already painted. I'm gonna outline first, then fill in. I'm 
and go underneath his chin. And I'll go over that kind of rainbow shape. There is one more area down here too. Where this pencil line down here is with your small brush, just kind of go over it and black. There we go. So I get one above my rainbow shape, the right of this foot, the left of that foot. And then this area up here and down here, you're gonna paint black. You can use your small brush or your big brush. So don't go into this area at all. And don't worry about the feet just yet. I'm going to use my smaller brush for those smaller areas that I can't quite get. Again, be sure you don't have any white peeking through on this area. Make sure your paint is nice and flat. You don't want any big bumps. You want it to be nice and smooth. So coming together so cutely. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to paint around these pink areas inside each uh, feet or foot. So I'll start down here and I'm still using my small brush because I'm doing my line work and I'm just slowly but surely peeling it and I'll show you how I go around those little pink toes. Just so I'm going to go around this oval shape first, in the kidney, and the shape again in the, uh, the foot, and then I can go around these oval shapes and just kind of clean it up with my small brush and my black paint. So I'll just make a nice clean oval shape around each. And when I'm done with this area, then I can use my small brush or my big brush to fill in all that white space. Use my small brush in these smaller areas up here. And if you want, you could use your big brush or your small brush maybe down here. I think I'm gonna go back to my small brush just in case. Be very careful to stay inside this area. one foot so cute and then same idea with the second paw I'm gonna go around this kidney shape go around the whole foot go around those four oval shapes and then fill in with my small and big brush It looked like I got a little spot of black right there, but I'm going to go ahead and just cover it up with my uh, bamboo later on. So if you got a little bit of black on the outside later on, you can cover it up with some of that darker green. And my last but not least, that one right there. 
and then you can go in there and use your small brush for maybe smaller areas. And if you wanted to jump to your big brush, you can just be extra careful. Be sure your paws look pretty similar. This one is definitely smaller than this one, so I'm gonna go in there, make these ovals a little bit smaller. I want them to look pretty similar. So cute, amazing. I'm gonna wash and dry the brushes that I've used. So this time too, be sure that you've really washed and dried your brushes pretty well. I'm gonna give this some more time and dry before I put the line that separates the arms and the eyes in there. So we're just gonna give this some drying time before we put anything on top. And I'm really gonna wash my two brushes and I'm gonna even hug them with my paper towel like so to get them extra clean. I want some nice clean brushes. Because I'm gonna be jumping into my uh, dark green over my light green for my bamboos. And if you do not have all the stuff that we have so far on our canvas, you are welcome to I pause the video and I think later on I'll probably go back now that I look at it a little bit further away I'll go back and kind of mess with these and make them a little bit smaller a little bit more matchy matchy to that side but be sure you have everything so far looking nice and clean again if you want to pause the video at this point before you move on to bamboo and details that is absolutely fine all right so bamboos so fun and so easy to once you kind of get it down um, you break it down into simple shapes so I'm going to start with my small brush and my dark green so be sure your light green is nice and dry be sure you're going into your dark green now with your small brush and for my bamboos I'm going to start kind of over here off the corner of my canvas close to the foot and off to the left and I'm gonna make a line that's a little bit crooked coming towards my panda. And I'll stop kind of maybe a little bit above the foot. So I made a line coming towards the canvas, starting close to the bottom of the foot, curving in towards the can uh, panda and stopping a little bit above the foot. Small brush, thin line. Then I'm going to go in there and fill it in just a little bit more. My paint's a little dry, so I'm going to add water and tap it on the paper towel. Just a little bit, get my dark green a little bit more wet. But if your green seems like it's moving fine, don't worry about getting your paintbrush wet. You always want to tap it on the paper towel, though, if you do get your brush wet. I'm going to go in there and make this a little bit thicker, almost like the thickness of a pencil. not too thick so almost the thickness of a pencil so there I go once I'm done I'm going to go back to my dark green and above it the same length I'm going to kind of go side to side where my bamboo would break but there is a little bit of light green peeking through once I was done I can go back for more dark green. Give a little bit of space between the line and the next area. Kind of have that same idea of coming up and thickening out the line. So this one's curving in towards the panda a little bit too. And it's about as long as the other one. I'm gonna go over my line and make it a little bit thicker almost as thick as a pencil. Again, it's curving in towards my panda. And you, I can still see some of that light green peeking through. That's not a problem. If you do want it to be more solid, if you made your background more solid, then you would want to go back later on and add another coat of this dark green. All right. And then I'm going to do what I did before. I'm going to 
leave a little bit of space. Make it a little bit of a line coming up and down. Or excuse me, side to side. And then I'll start my next line. Kind of curving in. And this one's going to actually go above the panda's ears a little bit too. Again, kind of curving up as well. That one's a little bit of a longer line, huh? From there to there. So I made that line. And then I'll go in there and I'll make it a little bit thicker. I'm going to make a little bit of line going side to side. I do have another one kind of going up right here. And we're going to kind of follow the same idea where it's almost like a thin rectangle shape and then a line going side to side. So I am going to start maybe just a little bit higher on this one and make a line off the side of my canvas. You can see that line. And give a little bit of space between this one and this one. And these two are about the same length. Looks like long rectangle shapes, long and skinny rectangles. And then I'm gonna make a line going side to side And then I'll come up off the side of my canvas again. Be sure there's a little bit of space between the line going side to side and your next section of bamboo. And this one is the same as this one, which is the same as that one. The length is pretty similar. And then I'll make a line going side to side with a little bit of space between that and the other section. Bamboo. Hopefully you guys can see that. Same thing again. I'll build a line and then just kind of fill it in. About the same length as the other ones. Same width too, so it's almost as wide as a pencil. Make a line going side to side. Give a little bit of space between each section. And then I will come up to the very top with a little bit of a line. So whatever I have left, I'm just going to finish off like so. All right. Next little area of bamboo. Later on, I'll go in there and kind of add those fun little leaves, but I, let me lay out where I want my bamboos to be first. Um, and then I'm gonna come up here and kind of come towards the panda in, in this kind of way. So let's, and I do wanna cover up this, but let's see, I might change my mind the way I wanna do it. So I'm gonna have a line, kind of like before, starting at the bottom of the foot and then ending a little bit above, coming in like so. almost like rectangles, thin rectangles. Then I'm gonna come up and make that line going side to side. And I'm not gonna go as, I'm not gonna wanna cross the other one. So I'm gonna kind of start straightening this out a little bit to the right and I'll show you how. And this one is the same length as the previous one.
I'm going to lean side to side and then I'll just kind of start straightening it out just a little bit. Go underneath the ear. If you got some on the ear, you can go back later on and paint that black. And then I'll straighten it out as I get a little bit higher up here. Oop, that might be too thick. I'm going to go ahead and go all the way up with this one. Like so. So you don't have to worry about a line going side to side up here. But you do want it to straighten out a little bit more. And if you are not done with your little uh, sections of, touch, um, of the bamboo, you are welcome to uh, put this on pause, but you definitely want to have at least three. If you feel like you might want to add another one over here, you can, but I think three is a good magic number for this one. All right. The next thing I'm going to do is going to go in there and kind of add the leaves. If you have an area that you accidentally splattered black up here, you're welcome to use the leaves to kind of cover it up. I might go in there later on and um, kind of build one coming down. Uh, but for now, I'll kind of show you how I would build them up here. I'm going to start with this left one. I'm going to maybe go a little bit underneath this line right here. Go up and diagonal. And then I'm going to come down a little bit further maybe below this line and come up into a diagonal so those two lines right there again about the same length this one's all the way to the very top after you have those two lines out you are gonna uh, kind of create these fun like um v shapes going out this way going out that way and then making one at the end so let me show you what i'm talking about two diagonal lines, and then I'm going to sweep, 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 sweep. Grab some more. My green paint is pretty dry. I've had it for a while. So I'm going to come up, sweep, 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 sweep. That's on the, you can connect them or you can be just a little bit off. Kind of do a little variety. And then on this other side, I'm going to come up, almost making it like a V shape. Sweep, 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 sweep. Where I'm just kind of flicking at the end and then at the end I'm going to add one kind of finish it off so let me show you how again so let me get my brush a little bit wet my my green paint is super dry so green I'm going to come up on the left side and go sweep up 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 and then to the right And then at the very end, I just kind of sweep up that one. Perfect. I do want to get one, let's see, down here. Not this first section, but the second section. Maybe in the middle, I'm going to come up. And again, you can go all the way into the bamboo. I'm going to kind of work off a little bit where there's a little bit of that limey green poking through. But same idea, I'm gonna flick up on this side, flick up on the other side, making that V shape, and make one at the end. And then up here, I'm gonna make an upside down V. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So off this line, I'm gonna make this line coming down here and then this line coming down here. So it's not too big, it's a, it's kind of like a cricket upside down V. I'm gonna use my small brush, and now my Vs are gonna be upside down as well. So I'm gonna flick, 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 and I'm working off each line, and then the one at the end. Same with this one, that's flick. Kind of like, they're kind of upside down, this one's a little bit more sideways. Going down. Fill up that space. So I'm making a line and then going in there. And again, if you 
want these to be a little bit more solid, you can go in there and add another coat. I do want to add some more greenery up here. So I'm going to come down a little bit further. So underneath the ear, I'll come up to a diagonal. I'm working off that green, but you can leave it a little bit of space. I'm going to flick up. See that the letter V right there, and then don't forget about the one at the end. Okay, I'm gonna go and make it a little bit closer to the ends. All right, I'm gonna go in there and make just a little bit, a couple more. I think I'm gonna do maybe a mini one down here, going up into the left. that one so yeah and you can even overlap over your panda too if you want cute and if you wanted to go in there and add some more you're definitely welcome to if you feel like you're at a good point you're welcome to stop i think it looks pretty cute as mine is right now but again if you want more greenery you can go in there and add a little bit more greens I'm going to go ahead and wash and dry my small brush. But if you're still working on your bamboo, you're welcome to keep adding some more greens. Just think about the direction you want the line. If they're kind of going up and diagonal, or you have this one coming down, then you're flicking out to the left, to the right, always in that kind of uh, V shape. And then don't forget about adding a little sweep at the end, kind of flicking your brush with your sweeps. All right, and my small brush is very washed and dried, so I don't have any green on it. I'm gonna go in there in the eye shape. So whenever you're ready for this, this is the next step. I'm gonna grab some white with my small brush. And over here, kind of in the top area, with a little bit of space from the edge, I'm gonna make a white circle. So small brush, white paint, and I would probably do two coats of white with my small brush because I can still see some of the gray peeking through. But if you like it with a little bit of gray, no problem. You are all set with one coat. I'm keeping it pretty small, definitely smaller than a penny size, and I'm just kind of going around with my brush. I do see I have some shiny spots with my black still, so if I was not recording, I would definitely give it some more time to dry. But small brush again, try to make sure that they're both pretty even and pretty uh, much the same as far as the distance from the edge right here. And it's always better to start off small and get bigger if you need to. And I can see those wet sp spots of black on here. Okay, I need two little white circles. Like so. Make sure those two circles are about the same size. If your white got too big, you, you can let it dry and then go around it in black to kind of clean it up. But I can definitely see that that one was a little bit more wet. It's a little bit more gray. If you wanted to give it two coats so it's a little bit more white, you can. But be sure to kind of give it more time to dry. So I have two whitish gray dots on here. So again, if I wasn't recording, I would definitely give it some more time to dry before I made those white circles in there. But if you're okay with gray, not a problem. It still kind of works. Um, once I was done, I don't wash my brush. I do kind of just wipe it off on my paper towel. And I'm going to come in a little bit on my arms and create a little bit of a gray. Let me see if I can grab some of that gray. So a little bit of distance from the left of the arm. Come in a little bit of diagonal where the arm and the body separate. I didn't add any more paint to my brush. I just kind of used the leftovers from me creating the eyes. And I did get my brush a little bit wet. It was kind of becoming scratchy and dry. 
So I came in and made a diagonal line coming in. Came in a little bit and made a diagonal line coming in. One last thing for your panda. Once these two are dry, be sure to give them a couple minutes. Then you can wash and dry your brush. And if with these ones, if they, they got too long, if you don't like the way they look, you can let that dry and add black. Um, and then let the black dry and then go back with adding your gray lines in there. Because there is a little bit of space from where it kind of hits the, the face area. But back to the eyes. So once these um, two areas were nice and dry, you are going to add some black dots. I'm going to use the back of my big brush where there's that perfect little circle. So the back of my big brush, I'm going to dip into the black. Again, be sure yours is uh, dry, doesn't look wet and shiny. And I'm just going to push it down like a stamp in the center and make that eye black. And then right in the center, pushing down, make that eye black too. So cute. Um, and again, I would always kind of step back, see if you wanted to add anything. A couple things that I might do is I might go back and kind of clean this up so it matches a little bit more to that one. Um, also, I would go back here and kind of clean up the white um, as well so the face is a little bit more rounded. But always be aware, if you have a wet paint and another wet paint touches it, they are going to mix. So if you don't want them to mix, give your paint some time to dry before you put a color close to it or on top of it. Otherwise, there is your super cute panda painting. I hope you guys had so much fun. Thank you so much for joining Young at Art and have a beautiful day.